it's your boy Ancient Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We have our usual suspects of AD or Alpha Dean. We have Spigs18 or Anthony. And just as a quick reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to uh, excuse me, follow us here on Twitch or subscribe to us on YouTube. It really helps the channel out a ton. And we thank you for it. But Dean, what are we doing here tonight? Uh, it's another night of an interview. We got Kid Huff is a great YouTube and Twitch channel that focuses on all wonderful aspects of tabletop gaming. Arcus, our friend here, produces a wonderful content ranging from actual plays, learning the basics of cipher system, interviews, GMing advice, and even great advice and tips on using and learning new VTTs for your game sessions. So without further ado, let's welcome Arcus from KedHub. And, you know, Arcus, why don't you say a big hello to the people out there? Hey, everybody. I'm Ken Up. How's it going? Awesome. Hey, Arcus, uh, do you prefer Arcus or Ken Hub? Wh oh, whichever is fine. I'm good with whichever. Oh, okay. So, Dan, you put the pressure on me. It's a GMT, <laughs> Interchange as you need. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Ken Hub because I think... Right. Um, a lot of people online good. just go with, like, Ked or Ked Hub. Ked if you're lazy. I am. <laughs> so welcome welcome to the ceu i'm happy to have you here me and you've been chatting on discord for for a little bit trying to get this to happen so i'm i'm yeah. happy we finally got this to happen so can you just like tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and maybe um tell us about your tabletop rpg experience about myself and tabletop R R rpg experience oh there's a long one okay uh, <laughs> about myself simply um i do like the youtube stuff um, started out as like a variety streamer, um, even though I've been playing RPGs forever and a day. Didn't really jive with that. Wasn't really my thing. Um, then I, I used to work professionally in graphic design. So then I started doing things like free overlays for streamers and stuff for a while to sort of garner those first views and start actually getting me some people. Also wasn't really my thing. People got really needy very quickly. <laughs> um, but then I started getting to doing more of the RPG and artsy stuff on there, making maps and doing live games and all that stuff. And that's that's when I'm like, I like doing this. So that's that's when I started to to get into doing more of that type of stuff, like on my my YouTube channel, which I'm focusing more on than on the Twitch these days, stuff like that. So that's kind of my main thing I'm up to these days. You know, it's um, funny you said uh, I was doing free overlays and people got needy. And I, in my mind, I was thinking, who would have thought that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they get, I was like, it's a free overlay. I'd make them animated stinger transitions and like everything, whole shebang. And like, I used to do this professionally for this stuff. And they'd be like, they'd just be like, ah, I need this. You're doing this wrong and all these things. And I'm like, it's for free. Buddy. Yeah, how do you get so some nitpicking when it's like free? Said, how did you do it wrong, right? I mean, how did I do this wrong and it's free? You're gonna get what you get, and that's that's it. We're cutting it. Oh, uh, before we dive into the next question here, um, <laughs> the second bit of Anthony's question there was, what's your experience with uh, tabletop role playing games? Like, um, what, what, how long have you been playing them? Like, what's your favorite system so far? I mean, I, I kind of have a feeling I know the answer to that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might. Um, so I started in 1994, I want to say. Um, it was with, uh, actually, the first books I ever got was from my mom. And I can even see a picture behind you for it uh, type thing. Uh, the original red box set, D&D. Awesome. Um, didn't really get to use it much because I jumped right into AD&D 2nd Edition. And I've played like everything since then, like Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, Top Secret, Rifts, like you name it. I've probably dabbled in it at least once uh, until the, the the big floods of RPGs that's come out and everything like that. <laughs> um, these days, uh, I do still play a lot of D&D &D because that's just what most people seem to be familiar with. It's not my favorite system. I don't dislike it. If I was stuck playing D&D &D for the rest of my life, I'd still have fun. It'd still be great. Um, but I find the universal, like a little bit na more narrative heavy systems like like Fate or Cypher um, really are my go to's like uh, I have my group has fallen in love with Cypher because it's that nice middle like Fate is a little too narrative. Sometimes there's not a lot of rules to it. And some of my players wanted a little more crunch, whereas like Cypher, very narrative, super easy for the GM to run and it's got that little bit of crunch for the players so it's nice immediate middle of the road you, you got a smart, 
group of a play group. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I think I think everybody on the screen right now agrees with that uh, that uh, that particular assessment. You know, yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. a good one. You hit the nail on the head. It's it has that just enough crunch to feel satisfying for the player, but again, that narrative lean is, is just awesome. Uh, but yeah, uh, diving into the next one here, uh, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but can you tell us a little bit more about your YouTube and Twitch channels? What are they all about and why did you decide to create a channel in the first place? Yeah, so uh, the Twitch side of things is easy. Like I said, I started out as a variety streamer. Um, I found that actually made me hate play video, hate playing video games at the time, so I kind of stopped doing that. Um, thankfully, it hasn't done that for RPGs. I actually like doing the live plays on that. I even make them a little interactive on the Twitch. Like you can redeem bits to have like player co complications or intrusions and stuff like that happen, which I like the audience being able to kind of like mess with the players a bit. The players like it too. But um, I have been moving further and further away from Twitch for reasons um, and going more and more focused on the YouTube, both for the live streaming as well as my videos. And my videos have, uh, they range, I've got various series. Uh, I've got like deep dives into like Eberron for D&D, &D. Uh, my Cypher basic videos, which seem to be taking off people. I don't know if Cypher's just been growing or people really liking those videos or what, but they're they're really enjoying those. Um, I also kind of do the, the interview thing with people uh, lately. I've only got three episodes out so far because I just started it, but my Ked Talks. And, uh, and also one of the major things um, I've got started and sort of planned but not quite there yet is my kids corners videos which is like a lot of advice and stuff like that but one of the things i really wanted to do is take traditional writing techniques like i already did one on the monomyth or hero's journey and how you could apply them to long form like rpg campaigns and stuff like that so i'm um, gonna do, do some stuff uh, Dean, before you hop in, I, I just want to say, like with all our guests, you know, I, I do a deep dive because I, I tend to write the show notes. So I do a deep dive and in, into people, you know, into our guest catalogs. And mm -hmm. I've really been enjoying your channel. Uh, um, not only the actual plays are hella cool, but I love the TED Talks. I love the um, the Cypher Basics is what drew my attention to you in the first place. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I started watching all the other shows and they are really, really good. I actually, I think I caught up today at work because I kind of binged <laughs> like three hours worth of video watching. Don't tell my boss. Today, but... You just did. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you do really great stuff. I just want to put that out there. Oh, thank you. I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, I watched a couple episodes. I haven't watched as many because I work 12-hour days, so it doesn't always work out until I get off. Like, you know, tomorrow I'll be able to do stuff. But uh, <laughs> but now that you got a few episodes under your belt, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the experience of creating your content for YouTube and <clears throat> is, any, any, uh, any tidbits you think you've learned in the process? uh yeah i i'm i mean my channels i've really only i've had my channel for a while and i've been dribbling out the videos over time and stuff but i'd say like most of the people like my subscribers have happened probably within the last just few months because they've started focusing on it and when i was originally doing some of the videos i wanted to do like animated bits to it kind of like um i don't know if you know the channel like Kirk, i don't know how you pronounce it Kirk Kurtz Kurtz cat Cat. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a science one, a little animated things to it. It's like, yeah, it's really cool. And then I realized I'm never going to finish videos if I do that. Whereas <laughs> like lately, it's just most of the cypher ones are just like my bobbing head and me talking and yeah. people are getting more information out of that. So I'm realizing maybe I don't have to make such a big production out of everything. Maybe I could just like pump the videos out and then what people like will like. <laughs> That's probably the best way to go. Yeah, I, I love those high production quality videos. Like I look, you know, like uh, in the Cypher space, you know, I look at like Claire from Infinite Construct and mm -hmm. I'm amazed at like the the quality of those videos. Oh, but I love then, her content. She, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> but me, Al and Dean are some lazy asses. So we'll never get, we'll never get to that. That Stay. mostly falls on me. I'm like the tech dude, and I'm the laziest of us. So, uh, um, yeah, our production well, value is what it is. <laughs> I think we all take a, we can all take a, a piece of that. Like I said, hopefully, if everything works out, I can leave my nine to five, or should I say, my seven to seven 
behind in the next couple of years and focus more on stuff I like to do. Oh, we all we all like that, I imagine. Oh, before we go, yo, D, you got on a silk robe, dude? No, it's my it's um it's a shirt actually, oh, but it's like, um like <laughs> Well, you know, hold on, man. No, don't tell the people my business. He's showing up with the bling to look nice for me. You, you really want to talk about it? <laughs> oh yeah, now it's perfect. <laughs> Keep the sunglasses. Oh, on. You want me to talk about it, man? Wait, don't make me go get my skimmer over there now. <laughs> 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 that was hilarious. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting. All right, it's my turn to ask a question. It's your turn to ask a question. Yeah. All, right, all, right. all right, back on AUKUS. It's very obvious from listening to this show. I just told you I was binge watching it. You have a love for virtual tabletops. You, you give out one. Um, you give out wonderful tips on on your show on how to use them. Right? Do you have a favorite? Even though I know it which your favorite is from watching your show in your opinion. And what do you feel is the most important thing for a person to look for when they're deciding on a VTT? So I, I made sure when I was going through with the different groups, especially since a couple of the groups I'm doing with are, are specifically people that haven't played RPGs before. And I've been introducing them through them and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, I sat down with each of the virtual tabletops. I've gone through like Fantasy Grounds and Foundry and Roll20, even Tailspire, and just, just to see what the pros and cons of each one of them are. I actually hope to do reviews eventually. Um, my favorite is Foundry because I, I have some technical know-how, I have some artistic know-how, and uh, Foundry to me is the tabletop where the more you put into it, the more you can get out of it. Um, which is great. Uh, I I think it's absolutely fabulous with that. The, the way you can mod it, you could like personally adjust basically everything in it. And it's such a robust system that I've used it for other things than RPGs, in fact. And it's been really great. Um, with what you're looking for in a virtual tabletop, the thing is, is that as much as I love Foundry, it's not for everybody. If you just want to get together with some friends and huck some dice then you don't necessarily need that level um you could just go and roll 20 for free or if you have a sign up on D, &D beyond and you're playing D, D. I think there's the dice in there now like you don't need anything fancy you can even just use a bot in discord if that's all you need like you don't it it depends on how deep in the rabbit hole your group really wants to go we like our toys so my groups tend to go pretty deep um but it does come with its downfall because if you don't have at least one or two tech guys around to figure this stuff out, and thankfully you seem to have one despite <laughs> his, his energy requirements. Um, <laughs> uh, if you don't have one or two of those around, then something like foundry as good as it is out of the box, like it is still okay out of the box. Um, you won't get the full potential out of it. If you don't have someone that's willing to tinker with it in that case, there's, I have a love hate relationship with roll 20, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like you could go, you could use those just fine. It no, there great. is something wrong with roll 20. <laughs> there is. Yes, there okay. is. I'm trying to be nice because I don't want to bad mouth anybody. I'm going to say, I'll say <laughs> He's it for Canadian. you. Man. He's going to be nice. But I know. I'm, try, I'm trying but, to be nice. If we're really going to pick it apart, then yes, I did the financial <laughs> breakdowns of everything you get in Foundry for a one-time purchase versus having to sign up on the paid stuff on Roll20 to get a fraction of those features and how long it takes. Foundry, despite being like a $50 price tag or whatever, is... Uh, All I'm going to say <laughs> is that the dice roller on Roll20 is the worst thing ever. I don't like it. I hate it for the fashion. <laughs> There's nothing that can save roll 20 because of that damn dice roller. Well, Someone's rolled a lot of ones. Dean's personal mission is to make sure we never get a roll 20 sponsorship ever. <laughs> uh, oh. My group has that phrase where like, once we abandon roll 20, like uh, right, one of my friends is actually jamming a game right now, actually, um, as we speak, uh, I'm not gonna say where, because you gotta stay here people. Um, <laughs> but he, he has said the same thing as me. He's like, never again. When, ne never again. It's like I would rather use a Discord bot. Just <laughs> let me ask you back. about Foundry because I've actually never used Foundry. What's the upfront prep like 
like if you was a GM and you just like, let me just give you like a scenario for like Cypher, which is very minimalist. Like say I wanted to prep images and uh, some character sheets. Is, is, is it, um, does it require a lot of heavy upfront prep? The neat part with Foundry that I found is I found one of the more complicated systems to set up was Dungeons and Dragons. Foundry was super simple. You, you jump in, um, your character sheets are for like, there's options in the character sheets to toggle things on and off, depending on your campaign setup. And it's really easy to do. You can, your players can just like click new actor, the character sheets there, just got to fill everything in. You click a button, you can add an image, like very, very simple. Um, only one person has to own a foundry license and like, you're good for everybody. And it doesn't even have to be the DM technically. It's just like wherever it's hosted, it's fine. Um, for something like Cypher, it has been, it was, it was a lightning quick setup. Uh, even with the extra bells and whistles that I've added, it has been out of all the systems that I've run one of the smoothest. I'd say the only one that's run smoother was fate, but that's just because there's really nothing to, to that system. Like as good as it is. Except there's, there's, um, for the dice. It has the dice roll on there. Um, oh yeah, there's, there's like and roll 20. You can like type it in. Um, there's also buttons you can do to, to do that. Um, in the cipher system in foundry has like, if you set up the, your skills, whether you're trained or specialized or whatever, or all of your abilities, they have the buttons beside each one of those. And it brings oh, up awesome. a prompt asking you, like, do you want to apply effort? Do you have any assets, et cetera? It does all the math for you. So you don't have to do like the times three if for some reason, multiplications aren't your jam the the computer does it for you <laughs> oh that's awesome i'm definitely gonna check it out i got one i you know i i have roll 20 but i'm gonna ask this out there for the for the masses is i mean roll 20 i have foundry but for the masses when you are setting up is, now is your uh are your mods available as well you know did you make yours public you know, can, can oh, my through. my setup, because I do have everything from Cypher plugged in, but I can't share them because that's copyright information. Um, so unfortunately, I, I can't do that. Um, I have said on, on uh, several of my videos, could pe people have asked me that like a bunch of times, like, oh, I see you've got all the types and descriptors, and everything. Can you share it? And I'm like, ah, I can't. Well, Monty Cook is going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, I just wanted to ask that so people understood that aspect of it too, because that's yeah. that's really a cool aspect that you can mod everything that you want into it, though. Yeah, it's super easy to do. Like you don't have to have everything typed in. I just I'm extra, <laughs> as far as that's concerned. Honestly, it's just as players like take options, you can just import it or type it in as needed. You don't need the whole thing like right. I have. Um, I just like it for my players that they just, as they make decisions, they can just drag and drop onto their character sheet and they're done. So that's really uh, neat, I, actually. I see <laughs> Gonza in chat um, was talking about that they do a lot of mods themselves. Maybe Gonza, we could hook up with me offline and uh, show me some of those mods. I definitely want to look at Foundry. I, I think yeah. I've spoken to a couple people on the server about showing me Foundry because, uh, you know, I'm lazy. I need somebody to walk me through it. <laughs> well, my YouTube, a lot of the videos, they, they all have information about Cypher, but then there will be a section in a lot of the videos that like, and here's how it works in Foundry. Yeah. Um, so it, it really helps sort of tell you and where to go for that um, if you are interested in such a thing. And there are still Cypher, Cypher specific mods that have nothing to do with the content, the copyright content that are totally free and like you can find within Foundry itself too. Nice. Yeah. Definitely take a look at it. Um, I'm on the lazier side, so I usually stick to Albert Rodeo when I'm doing BTTs. <laughs> it's just such a quick, easy thing to use and set up. It's it's really nice. Um, yeah. But either way, though, um, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but you have a, f a few excellent actual plays on your channel, like XL87, excuse me, XLA87, and The Truth Outside, your Numenera uh, stream. What are some of the challenges of running for an audience as opposed to just running like for your home game? Yeah, so that that's the reason the truth outside, unfortunately, if you'll see, like it only goes up to like um, episode 10 or something and then stops because that group was like, hey, we don't like this anymore. Can we stop streaming it? And I'm like, oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas like the my my Sunday game is a stream of streamers 
that all are, are part of a streamer community. So like, we all get it. Like we're perfectly fine with it. Um, as a result, that's the one where I have it a little more interactive with the audience. Uh, one of the challenges for me, of course, is the fact that when you're, especially when you're running the game, you can't really take time to talk with the audience as much as if you were say a variety streamer playing a video game. Now I do have a hotkey setup that's pushed to mute. So my players can't hear me and I can talk to the audience a quick one. Um, every once in a while I get people coming in and, you know, if there's a donation or they're saying hi or subscribe or something like that, then I can at least say, Hey, how's it going? Or someone says something funny or someone does an interesting complication or GM intrusion. Then, uh, I get to respond to them. And sometimes I kind of have to hash it out with the person in chat be like, Hey, no, that will kill the party. Let's try something a little easier. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it is difficult versus running a home game because home game you don't have that pressure you're just like if something screws up you just gotta be to your players like hey it screwed up whatever <laughs> whereas on my sunday game where it's it's meant to be not just a game but it's meant to be entertainment because it is meant to boost our channels it's meant to boost our community there's i think a certain level of expectation of presentation i I make sure everything's pretty. I make sure I have audio in the background. I make sure everyone's has cameras that is using cameras and everything is set. Like we, we sit down a good half an hour sometimes before we start game, make sure much like you guys did, like make sure everything's set up audio checks. We treat it kind of like a mini production and it's, it's a lot more than a home game where you're just like mowing down chips and just losing your, your shit. <laughs> me and Dean were actually talking about this very same topic like two days ago and we were mentioning how you need the buy-in from the players as well you know like understanding that hey we got to kill a little bit of the downtime discussion or the actual player buy-in to whatever the narrative is you know like you have yeah. a certain amount of time you want to tell a story so you have to like cut out a lot of fat you know, that you would normally wouldn't mind in a home game, but with a stream game is entirely different. You, you, you know, you're playing yeah. to the audience. Major, yeah. major, like we were saying, you know, those things. And then, you know, the other side too, what we talked about when we said, you know, there's a bit of the old, the, the railroading that we always say we don't really like, but you have to, you know, you have a specific amount of time to work within and so on and so forth. So your pacing becomes a point of interest and, everything that's going on around the players. So it's all, it all comes together though. Mm -hmm. Well, railroading for me is really easy to get around. It's always, I think I have a video on it. I'm not sure if I remember to do it or not, but I, I call it modular design. Like you, they don't have to know the rails are there. Exactly. Um, if you want them to fight goblins, and they decide to go to the mountains instead of the forests. That's fine. The goblins were in the mountains all along. Exactly. Players don't have to know that. <laughs> exactly. There's that, and that's what we're talking about. Like we yeah. were just saying that about, you know, the methodology, you know what we're going to do. We know we have to have, we want this many scenes to happen in this yeah. three hour period. They're going to happen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the illusion of choice. If it works for the government, it can work for a GM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I think one of the hardest part for me for online play um, has been, I've been playing with a lot more people I don't know. Um, I've had to do like interviews because I, I did once or twice. I'm just like, oh, come on in. I just invited a bunch of random people in from the community and we just like tried to play. And it was a nightmare because uh, like I, I have a lot of friends and players that are strong in the LGBTQ like community. Um, like we've we've got like uh, a, one couple in one of my games. It's like trans and gay and, and, and everything like that. And this guy came in in one of my games, I don't want to go into details, but let's just say I never want to relive this ever again. <laughs> so I'm a little more careful these days on who I vet to, to bring in on my games. <laughs> Table chemistry is definitely a thing. Yeah, we, we, I think we've all learned that, you know, from jumping into this endeavor, because I think we were all the same way. Hey, yeah, sure, come and play. I mean, even with games that are not going to be streamed or whatever, you're like, Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are bad. So, I mean, that's great. You know, so I'll just move on. Um, Dawson, we know you run a lot, um, uh, run and talk a lot about D and D and Numenera on your channel. Now, are there any other games you like to play or any other games you'd like to try, but haven't had a chance to yet? Oh, so 
I, I've been most of the time that I've been role playing since like 94, I've been the forever DM. Unfortunately, Welcome to my world. <laughs> um, and I, it's been mostly D and D. Not that I dislike D and D. Once again, no. I've, I've had tons of fun with D and D, but it's been mostly D and D. But there's so many other things I want. And recently, a friend sat down now, I, I uh, and ran Cyberpunk for me. But we we tried Cyberpunk Red not that long ago, and we weren't that enamored with the system. And I didn't feel like going back to Cyber Cyberpunk 2020, even though I have like the physical books. So we decided to use Cypher. And I have been adoring that game. Unfortunately, I had to take a few weeks off because of some things happening. Uh, but I, I am elated. I am so happy. <laughs> Someone has been running this game for me that isn't a Euro fantasy, like standard cookie cutter game because um, as much as I've been running D and D and I'm, you know, like every nerd, I've read Lord of the Rings and all the fantasy. So I'm a sci-fi nerd at heart super super sci-fi nerd like i hear things of like uh, denny villeneuve doing like rendezvous with rama after he's done with dune and then like like so that's what i've kind of been i'm hoping someone will do a hard sci-fi for me someday in the future like a la like the expanse or something like that oh that'll be awesome so, so just so you know i don't know if you know but last week we uh we were over at marlo house and he's got all those supplements for cypher system for for his cyberpunk yeah, the you blood know. and chrome stuff. Blood yeah, chrome, I was yeah. uh, I was in the chat making sure I was watching that. Um, I already own all of them. <laughs> so, uh, I own like basically if I went to drive through RPG and I was like, oh look, cipher books, and just got them all. <laughs> so well, well, all of us who create cipher content, we say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so on you, Ed. Yeah, I was just waiting for you to finish. It. I'm dead. I'm dead. I can talk all night long. Yeah. You know, I said this earlier, but you know, my personal favorite, like of all your shows, is the Cypher Basic series because, duh, we Cypher Limited. <laughs> but can you tell us why you decided to start this series and what about Cypher System in particular appeals to you so much? Well, I, I hadn't heard much about the Cypher System. Uh, until we were we were sort of looking around i wanted to do a, a game which i have the let's play for it on on my channel i think it's like 10 11 episodes wrong long it's called totem where uh it is very similar very similar to american gods the the show american gods where like everyone is playing a like a god or representation of something or whatnot and i was kind of shopping around for a system and originally we were thinking fate because uh, we were somewhat familiar with fate at that point and then that was my first time stumbling upon the cipher system and i just i just fell in love <laughs> um i i yeah i just fell in love with that system and as a result that's that's kind of the system i've been been using for so many things since uh i've just i have so many setups and so many games planned and i just don't have enough groups or time as, as a I result have you picked up any of the other setting books? Like you said, hard five, uh, hard sci-fi. Have you picked up like Stars of Fire? Or, oh, um... oh, like I said, I just kind of cleaned out drive through RPG. Yeah, like oh, okay. whether it's Godforsaken, Claim the Sky, Sky yeah. the Stars are Fire, I've got it all. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I've got it all. We just sat down as a group and we're like, we're just going to take everything. We're going to plug it all into Foundry. So it's nice drag and drop. Uh, we've got like the PDF reader in Foundry. So if we need, we can like, we can bring up um, the books in Foundry to actually reference them as needed, and we just we just go. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's super that's, awesome. Absolutely. Um, I, what you call it? I definitely know that that feeling of first discovering Cipher. Um, when I when we first started playing role playing games, it was just D and D. Anthony was a DM, and it was fun. You know, actually, I, tried... I introduced you to role playing games on Pathfinder. It was Pathfinder we played first? Get out of here. Yeah, Pathfinder. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. Um, yeah. When uh, he introduced me to Cypher, it was a whole new world. Like, I couldn't... Yeah. I couldn't have enough notebooks to write stuff down. I, I just, any idea I had, I watched something interesting on TV. I read something interesting in a book or something. It was immediately my mind went to, I could run this in a game. I could run this in cyber system. It's just a whole new world. It, it's just awesome. <laughs> Um, I think when I first discovered Cypher System, I got the same excitement I got for the world of Rifts, 
like the palladium system drifts oh, except yeah. it Absolutely. was a system that works <laughs> uh whereas like i like rifts but the kevin Symbidia, i don't know what you were thinking putting this together like why you haven't done a second edition or something because there's like like dual wielding there's three different rules for dual wielding and two of them are incompatible and when you <laughs> ask him about it he replies with i'll put it on the list like <laughs> If you watch any of the, I have a love and hate relationship with riffs with Palladium, Palladium in general. I've played that. That was like you know when everyone you know I, I'm an '80s gamer. You know, mm -hmm. so I I I was with all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, everything Palladium was doing, Robotech, everything they were doing back in the day. That that was my jam. Yeah, but I unlimited. love. I have so many great main, uh, memories of Palladium games, but those rules are a freaking mess. Nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare. But no, I think we all have like a similar story when it comes to Cypher system, you know, opening up doors. I mean, I was I was in the land of burnout when I found Numenera, you know, mm -hmm. back in 20, 2012, you know, 2013 when it when it released. And I like everybody else, you know what? And then all of a sudden, Cypher System just was like <sighs> mind blown, you know, because it had just enough crunch to get out of the way. Yeah. So. And it's so easy from the GM side to run. Exactly. Exactly. So little prep is needed aside from like just doing your story stuff. It's mod modded on the fly. Like, oh my gosh. So exactly. Bad. Uh, all, all I need is a pen and a napkin. <laughs> That's the whole game. Um, and, and, uh, I'm just going to do a little self-promotion. Uh, next week, Thursday, I'm actually going to prove that concept on um, the Myth and Legend YouTube channel because I am actually crafting a one shot with a pen and a napkin on a spot. Nice. So, so um, if you want to check it out, I'll be on that channel. I'll, I'll definitely post it on the Discord or Facebook. Like I said, and, I, and I can attest to it. I've actually seen it happen. We were at Gen Con <laughs> at the bar drinking, and this man is got the napkin. And he's like, give me your napkin. <laughs> you don't always need more than that. I ran an 11-month no. D&D campaign. Or I was, sorry, it wasn't D&D. &D, it was Pathfinder um, with nothing but like a single page of point bullet points a couple of stat blocks and like some like npc names and stuff and uh i prefer normally to plan more than that but it was amazing everyone loved it you it yeah. just depends on how good you are at the improv and the yes and and yeah, yeah. that's how i like to do it <laughs> I think sometimes and I, and I know this might, i might be the outlier but sometimes i think when i over prep i have a worse game you know, when, when I have everything planned out, for some reason, my mind locks up. And it could be just me personally. But when I have all this, like, information overload, I tend to not tell a cohesive story because I have all these ideas that I want to try. Like, my mind is trying to say, I yeah. got to put this in. I, mean, I, I was working on it. I think I agree with you, Anthony. I think, honestly, probably four years into gaming i was the guy who was like i i'm not writing all this stuff anymore <laughs> yeah. you know and i've been doing this for, since 1977 you know i just didn't know what i was doing until you know i got old enough to understand <laughs> well, that's the reason i i i can't like not even that i won't i feel like i can't run ah. the pre-published like adventures for like D D or adventures path for pathfinder or anything like that um i don't remember the last time i ran one and the few times that I have, I just go so completely off book. I don't even know why we have a book anyways. So I, I just can't run them. I got to tell you, I got to tell you one last dude, time. This guy right need, here. This you guy don't right need, here. You don't need, here's the problem I have with people when, when, it's not even a problem, but here's where the disagreement I have with a lot of people that run pre-written adventures. The pre-written adventure, right, is not, to run verbatim straight out of the book. Because if that was the case, no. everyone's playing the same exact adventure yeah. every you, single you time. You are supposed to take the shell of the story and craft it into your own life. That's what you're supposed to do with people in adventure. But when I, I, I'll say that around certain crowds and they look at me like I'm crazy. You well, know hey, I mean? 
But Anthony, you take it to a whole nother level because Anthony just takes the title of it. He <laughs> takes the title and that's it. Nice. <laughs> Oof, but um, yeah. But it's just weird. <laughs> it is weird. Moving along though, um, just to get a little more back on track. <laughs> get sidetracked. Get sidetracked. Um, I mean, it happens. It's, 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 it yeah. happens. Uh, you also have a, uh, a show series called Ked's Corner, where you talk about gaming advice and your opinions on various gaming topics. Are yeah. there any topics that you haven't touched on yet that you want to do a video on? Uh, any reason you haven't done it yet, ETC? Oh, plethora of them. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I want to delve a little bit more into using classic writing techniques in... It, but adjusting them for being in a live game. Cause there was like, when I did the deep dive, for instance, in the hero's journey, um, not only did I give advice, but I discovered a lot of things myself about how you would need to adjust it to be a live performance. Cause I feel like a lot of people misunderstand. They're like, oh, I want to want to write my campaign. So it's like a movie, but it's, it's not a movie. Um, you, you write the plot, but the players write the script. So like, it's doing doing videos on how to modify these writing techniques to be in this live performance setting is something I really want to delve into a lot more. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. By the way, that um, episode was actually really awesome. Uh, I, I mean, I just love the whole hero's journey, you know, that's classic storytelling. And I, I think a lot of us do it in most of our games is just that um you you don't realize it or they don't realize it you know that they're actually using the hero's journey because you know that's a classic way of telling a, a story yeah for thousands of years yeah <laughs> yep oh you was gonna say something now no just yep <laughs> yeah any other um hot topics that you you want to discuss on uh oh uh I think some of the other ones I want to broach, which is, is going to give me probably some love from some communities, but hate from other communities, but I don't really care, um, is, is broaching some more topics about consent, inclusivity, just some more modern topics because things have really changed over time. And despite us being a bunch of like basically all gray beards sitting around like <laughs> doing all this stuff, I think for the most part, our, your guys channel looks like it's, it's pretty up to date. You're, you're, ex you've expanded your minds. And I know there's a lot of people out there that it's not that they're not willing but maybe they just haven't thought about it and like things like uh, a consent list which doesn't even have to be a binary consent list it could be like stay away from this topic go light on this topic things like this there's so many people that i think uh shy away from that going like ah a bunch of pansies you don't need stuff like that but uh, honestly, even with players I've been playing with for years, since I started making sure some of these things are okay, I've had some frank conversations with people like being like, hey, I'm actually, even though we've done this before, I'm actually not okay with this. Would you mind if we like didn't broach this particular topic in a game? And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of, as a society, we're, we're trying to get better with a lot of things, pronouns, inclusivity. Like I've got, I've got people in LGBTQ. I've got, um, I've got one player who's, who's actually fairly autistic. Like I've got players all over the gambit in my various games. And I think we need to, to have some more videos to help us broach these topics might be a good idea. Um, but I just know there's going to be some of them old school, like, ah, you're ruining things. We don't need this stuff. Yeah. You know, I think people, okay. I, I was just saying, I just think people need to realize, first of all, the, ga the, the, the gaming community is more massive than it's ever been. It reaches more people. Yeah. It reaches a larger variety of people. You know, even in my household, my wife, my wife's not a gamer, you know, was never a gamer. She never touched games until she got with me eight years ago. And you know, we're both in our 50s and now she's gaming, but these are people who've never had this. So they're not familiar and you're, you know, and they're not your normal group of friends that you can just go, hey, man, don't do that. Yeah. You know, so when you're going to be pulling in strangers and so on and so forth, you need to have these discussions. You need to have make these things available. I, I think Arcus said it um, when, when you first started talking about the topic of, of um, you know, um, inclusivity. I think a lot of it boils down to 
not fully understanding because I, I I think what comes about a lot. I know this one, uh, especially you get a lot of older gamers. You know, me and Dean both were in our late forties, so we were in. We grew oh, I'm in my fifties. Oh yeah, <laughs> but we grew Be up nice. in the era of the GM says what goes, and this right. is how it was, and you know. Yeah. You following my story, that there was no player agency really. It was, you know, and it was us versus the it was a player yeah. versus GM. But I think mm-hmm. the point I'm trying to make is I think the pushback you get from the X card and stuff like that is a misunderstanding. You know, it's more so when you sit down and they explain it to them, it's like, hey, we want to make sure everyone's comfortable. I think it's the way the information is relayed that get a lot of times is is the, where the pushback comes from. You know, because I, I know a lot of people that were very anti-consent document, very anti, and when I sit there and explain it to them, as in, hey, look, this has nothing to do with me taking away what you enjoy from games. It's more about me making sure that everyone at the table is comfortable with the material that's being relayed. Then they get it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I, I'm explaining it correctly. I, I think you got it. You got it on the head. I think part of it is is also the the shift in tone, not just in society, as we're we're hopefully at least for mo- some of us becoming more open minded uh, on topics and whatnot, but also just in the way that the game has changed. I mean. It stemmed originally like D and D actually originally came from war gaming like chain mail and stuff mm. like it originally it was originally just literally a you versus them situation, right. and it's only as the years have passed have we started to evolve the game to be more narrative in some cases to include stories and stuff like that. So it's I think as the game has evolved, we've had to learn to evolve. Just some people maybe haven't caught up as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you can always have the assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they exist. You can't avoid them. <laughs> but that's just it. You know, I mean, you remember when we did our, our video on the sitting game and all the hate we got. <laughs> so with that being said, man, we've had this wonderful, wonderful discussion with you, you know, and you you've given us tidbits and nuggets. But you know, with that being said, what can we look forward to, you know, from seeing from Cut up channels in the future. Any any anything special you got coming forward? Well, once XLA eighty seven is done, and brief the description of what that is for anyone wondering, uh, I'm running. It's Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition technically, but it's in LA in the nineteen eighties, and there's supernatural investigator, police cops, and it's kind of silly and over the top, which is the point. It's an like an eighties action movie. Um, most of these players bar one who's kind of like my liaison to this stuff has never played anything but DD. in fact this is like been my games have been their first DD sessions even so from this point on we're going to start branching out we're doing kids on brooms next um we're going to do a short stint that one should be probably about 10 episodes long um uh, i've got something super special planned for that it's not going to be your standard like euro fantasy hogwarts stuff we're going a little different a little left field on that one uh and then madoka? we're going to delve into cypher Sorry. what's that <laughs> said madoka whenever i hear witches and i think of something off kilter i think of madoka magic huh <laughs> well uh I, I don't know if any of my players are, are going to be watching this or not but we may be going to instead of like a hogwarts wizard euro school it we're it's probably going to be either in japan or korea um and it's gonna be it's gonna be i forget what i called it something uh something high school spell club and it's gonna have like sort of like an anime feel to it and there's gonna be a twist and they'll i see dig it i <laughs> dig it nice. and then after that we're gonna do cypher um uh, i'm gonna let them vote like we're gonna do a world building session in our session zero i'm gonna let them sort of vote on what we do uh, I'm hoping it kind of aims towards, I would like to do like a low fantasy, like Vikings thing, but I mean, if they go somewhere else, I'll, I'll go with it, but where it's going to be exciting what the, the live plays are going to be. Um, and of course I am expanding the Ked talks, uh, hoping to get me, maybe one or more of you on them at some point, <laughs> we shall see. Um, uh, I'm trying to get as many different viewpoints on there as I can, because, uh, even if it's, even if it's opposing or different viewpoints, I'm hoping I can even find one or two people that actually have an opposing viewpoint to me because I've, I've opened my mind on things before, or maybe opened other people's minds. I like to get the diff, very different viewpoints on those because it's been really helpful in understanding different ways to play. 
and I'm really hoping that we can expand those. And then, of course, I've got all of my other series, and I've got one episode on my deep dive into Numenera done, and then I just never touched it again. So I should probably get into that at some point. Yeah, people don't awesome. love Numenera. <laughs> people do love it. <laughs> <laughs> that that's like the understatement. You do any videos like. Any video that's Numenera based, and you're gonna get uh, three times the views that you normally would on a mm -hmm. regular cipher. Half but the time with Numenera, though, I, I I'll like think of a cool video, and then I'm like, wait, check Infinite Construct. No, never mind. Go check their video instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Claire, Claire just kicks ass. Mm -hmm. That is oh, yeah. facts. Does anybody in chat have any questions for Arcus or for us even before we go into our rapid fire questions? Uh, I had asked in the chat already. Uh, no one really seemed to uh, bring up any questions, but while people potentially think of some, we can do the rapid fire. And then if we have any questions from the audience, we can ask those after the rapid fire, just so you know, we keep things, keep things a little moving here. Yeah. All right, um, Arcus, this is where we dig deep deep we dig deep into your soul right and we pull out your essence oh, and we yeah. stretch it on the table for the whole world to see this is our world famous rapid fire questions i blame everything but, on my parents this <laughs> question, <laughs> question number one you can answer it's usually a one word answer but you can elaborate okay. you know let's but, go uh, al you want to go with the first yep. rapid fire question we'll dive right in player or gm gm 100 percent every time uh i i like to be players if i can once in a while to shake things up i am just more comfortable in the gm seat though uh i don't know if there's like a hidden megalomaniac inside there but uh i i have so many stories to tell and a little bit of character add and as the gm you get to play all of them uh so i just prefer running the game yeah solid pool answer. punches oh well sorry pool punches or tpk uh, pulled punches for sure. Um, I, I, depending on the game, I will, I've TPK'd before and, and I will probably TPK again, but especially if you play games that are narrative, a little more narrative heavy, have a bigger story, people are connected to their characters. Uh, you don't have to kill the party for them to have lost something or, or to show that there's been a complication or a failure and then have them reset on the game and, and it can be disruptive unless that is the specific type of genre you're going for. Uh, pulling right. the punches. I mean, you could fail at the quest and not kill everybody. <laughs> Online or in-person game? I'm torn on that one. I don't know if I can answer that truthfully because I miss a lot of things from in-person gaming over these past couple of years, the, being able to do the, the presence of a GM and, and as you're not just doing accents, but like body language and, and then side role play from the players, but online, um, being techie with art background as well. Uh, there are so many things I can do with videos and audio and images that are harder to pull off in person. So to me, I'm going to have to say I'm torn on that one. I can't answer one way or another. Uh, definitely times have changed, <laughs> Sim simply put. <laughs> uh, but next one here, announce the difficulty number or keep it a secret? I like to keep it a secret. Um, I My first campaign, I did announce the numbers, but uh, I had some players that were, they were playing it a little too tactically. And we decided as a group, well, I decided, and then they followed it along um that we were going to keep the difficulty i give them a description of the difficulty i'd be like this is very difficult or this is astoundingly difficult or this is super gravy but i i will keep the number a secret and they just have to go off of my description on whether they want to push for effort or anything like that nice that works. uh salty or sweet snacks at the table uh well we're all trying to lose weight. We've got several people with diabetes. Uh, so we try to do neither. We're pretty healthy these days, I got to say, like veggies. Maybe we'll do some barbecue. Uh, I don't have a sweet tooth. So I guess if I have to choose between the two, I would have to choose like a salty, savory snack. But 
we try not to have any snacks like that at the table at all anymore because I'm getting old and fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. RP or combat? Oh, RP for me. Um, combat, I might actually have to plan something <laughs> where uh, RP, I can just pull something out of my arse for hours on end and they will never know that i maybe forgot to plan something for this area or something <laughs> if it's just some npc rambling on <laughs> nice. uh, pdfs or physical books Ooh, i'm torn on that one because modern technology um i guess i would have to lean at pdfs a little bit just because it's easier with the bookmark systems and everything to get to the content you want but there's just there's just something about the feel and smell of a physical book. Exactly. It is so hard to pass up. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I love PDFs, but there's nothing, there's not a feeling in the world like cracking open a brand new RPG book. Oh, yeah. That first moment you crack it, you hear that sound. It, I, I'll tell you what's so bad. Like you, what you're saying, Anthony, is so true. It's so bad because you like get the PDF first, and I'm like book is great and i've read the pdf but when the physical book comes in i'm like <laughs> you know yeah 100 yeah. percent. so uh pen and paper notes or digital digital uh that one i will go with e even before we started playing more online before the big panini uh i had a laptop with me and i would use various things that ever note or um world anvil or or whatever i i it, I usually have so many ideas floating around and I'm going to lose it if it's on pen and paper. Uh, I prefer digital, personally. Okay. Rewritten adventures or original content? We spoke Sorry, about what, what, I didn't hear that. What was that? I said pre-written adventures or original content. Oh, wow. We kind of talked on that one yeah. already. Yeah, original. I can't do <laughs> pre-written. No, no, no. <laughs> can't do it. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's great for a lot of people. I can't do that. I always say this joke every time we, we ask this question, but we've interviewed several game designers and several people that are world-renowned for writing adventures, and they always answer original content. <laughs> and yeah. It always cracks me up. Because they're used to writing it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, but so it looks before, like we got a couple of questions uh, from the but, audience. Before we move on to those, I just have to say this because it was so funny. Did you just say before the great Panini? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say it like that. <laughs> oh my God. All right. But, anyways, yeah. So we do have a couple questions from the audience here. Um, so, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I take the first one. So our good buddy uh, Stormbringer off uh, from the server, Mike, good friend, good guy. Um, he says, "Your Eberron, what's your best summary? What's your best take?" Eberron, um, I, out of all of the D and D worlds, it's one of my favorite for a bunch of reasons. One, it gets right a rid of. A lot of the D&D worlds are stuck in like a Judeo-Christian mythology as far as like the religions go and everything like that. Eberron throws all of that out and everything is is very different. And then the fact that it's not just a standard Euro fantasy, like centric fantasy, and it it little little almost steampunkish um, has has a lot of other influences to it. I just like the fact that it it broke a lot of the molds of some of the previous campaign settings um not like some of the greats like i think planescape was to this day still one of my favorites um which you know great writers uh, <laughs> in that case um but eberron yeah it, it's eberron to me is because they broke the mold of the such the standard like greyhawk and forgotten realms and dragonlance of like those standard campaign settings they went different with it it's a different mythology um it is a big one for me especially with the types of players i have it's one of the only D, &D campaigns where you can sit down and have a character play an atheist and they might be right <laughs> like <laughs> um what it, what what do you think about the new planescape that's coming out are you excited or you think they're gonna mess it up mm, uh, i don't know i've been on the fence for several things lately on the way they've kind of released things on stuff like i i was a little upset with the dragonlance the fact that uh 
uh, Hickman and, and Weiss were basically not even told about it, never mind co consulted or anything about the setting, which was, I mean, one, they're still writing for Dragonlance. Like, they're still doing Dragonlance content on their own in form of, like, stories and stuff. So the fact that they didn't was kind of a big deal. Same thing with uh, Spelljammer. They didn't contact yeah. the original oh, writers at all. Spelljammer, not Planescape, yeah. I, I figure that's where you're going with it, yeah. yeah. Um, and then with Spelljammer, like, I don't know. I was a big fan of Spelljammer, and I did have one of my Let's Play series was, or Live Play series was Spelljammer, actually, not long ago, sort of. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it yet. We'll see. They have updated and changed some things I probably won't like, but uh, we're going to have to see as it all comes out. Oh, well, speaking of but Planescape anyway, if if um, Tia, I mean, if Wizards of the Coast does a Planescape and they don't involve Monty Cook, they have a problem. Because I, Mon yeah. Monty Cook pretty much did like 90% of the legwork for the original Planescape. Well, I, 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 I don't think anybody one. wants to touch Planescape anyway right about now with yeah. Path of the Plane Breaker coming out because mm. they've just they've just kind of redefined that entire mythology anyway with, with this one. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I always loved Planescape because of, uh, I mean, well, I guess Monty Cook's just brilliant so, <laughs> with some of that stuff. But it was, once again, that was one of those things where you look at all the classic campaign settings, Planescape was very different. So different. Very different, yeah. Um, there's another question. Uh, Lord and Lady M asks, what's your favorite cipher creature that you use? My favorite cipher creature is probably whatever I have made up on the spot for the particular situation that's happening. Um, uh, recently, I think one of my favorites is the um, in the normal cipher. It's just the, referred to as the kaiju, but in uh, Numenera, uh, was it called the Thanator or something like that? Titanator or something like that. Titanator. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite things and i love telling the players this i'm like the suggested gm intrusion for this creature is you get five experience and the gm intrusion is it notices you exist and they're like <laughs> that's terrifying <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's fun uh oh but yeah this has been a wonderful talk wonderful wonderful talk thank you so much for coming on and talking with us <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. really appreciate it yeah, we really appreciate it. And we definitely we definitely want to have you back on. And, you know, you have an open invitation to come back on and chat with us if you come up with anything that you want to talk to us about or just come back and BS with us again. <laughs> you did great with the rapid fire questions, even though you, you're a PDF, man. That's okay. We still love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but um, yeah, thank you so much. That was all, all um, totally awesome. Uh, before yeah. you dive into your spiel, though, Anthony, um, Arcus, where can people find you on the internet if they want to see more of your stuff? Well, if you go to a social media platform and you search for KedHub, you're probably going to find me because there's not too many people that are going to have the QEDHUP, which if anyone wondering, it actually stands for Quad Eret Demonstrandum Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle. That's an old science oh, thing because nice. I'm a big science buff. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, used, used to you do a science channel actually because I, I technically was trained as an engineer um, but uh, if you go to like YouTube Twitch Twitter basically anything and just search for KedHub you're, or put in KedHub after the URL you're going to find me that's the easiest way yeah I, I've come to the uh, conclusion that 90% of the gamers in the world are scientists or you know or or engineers it just seems like everybody we talk like if you talk to the people at Monty Cook Games just about all of them were some sort of science field you know it's great yeah um what day do you you do your live actual place for audience to know as well when, uh, uh, so my main one right now is Sundays at 7 p.m eastern time um, I am also a player in a couple other games. There's actually ones that uh, one is currently happening on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And every once in a while, we're also doing uh, that's on Bad Hair Gaming's channel. So if you search twitch.tv slash bad hair gaming, uh, I'm on I, I will be hopefully joining that one soon. He had his session one today, but I can't join for the like, first 
part of the adventure. So I won't be joining for a few weeks, but that's a good channel to check out anyways. Um, but my play is Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Nice. Uh, and I said it earlier, but I'm saying it again. If you um, enjoy gaming content, you enjoy actual plays, you, you want to learn about the, the basics of Cypher system, you want to learn about Foundry, please check out KetHub's channel. It is freaking awesome. Trust me, I just binge watched the crap out of that thing <laughs> for the last two days. I, I, I'm, uh, what you call, I, I'm uh, open testimonial to tell you that it's really great shows. So please, please go. The links are in the chat and the links will definitely be on the YouTube channel. Has a lot of it produces a lot of awesome content. Check it out. I, I enjoyed it tremendous, um, tremendously. And um, before I get in my spiel, Dean, you want to say anything? Just thanks for coming on the show. You know, everybody will see you on the next one. If you like us and you like what we do, please give us a, a follow here on our Twitch. Or if you find it in your heart, um, heart, subscribe to us or go to our YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe there. We really will really, really appreciate it. Or if not, if you don't if you can't do either of those things, join our Cypher Unlimited Discord server. We have the largest fan run Discord server for all things Monica Games. We have 4,000 members there and growing. You know, you, you you could talk about games, chat about games, play in games, play with us. You know, we um we either players or post it, or there's a ton of great GMs there. But if Discord's not for you, join our Facebook group. It's not as big as our Discord, but there's plenty of great conversations to be had there as well. Or if you want want to help us out some way financially, give us a donation on Kofi. Our videos are always free, but it helps us out with little things like Zoom course. Or if you want to be a cool ass mofo like Dean is wearing that Cypher Unlimited shirt, go to visit our online merch store and pick up some cool Cypher Unlimited merch like the shirt Dean got on or the hat I got on. And yes, there will be Cypher Unlimited capes. We'll definitely have it before Gen Con. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much it, right, Al? Unless I missed something. No, that was I everything. Was... Just a quick correction. Not Gen Con, Game Hole Con. Oh, Game Hole, correct. I'll yeah, be at Gen Con. Con. Uh, yeah. Not with capes, no, no. though. Not with, <laughs> not with the capes. No. Uh, but, and, and, uh, we will be promoting Game of Con a lot extensively. I mean, I think it's fair to say we will have a big footprint in Game of Con. So if you plan to go to a con and you can only go to one, and you want to play with all three of us and chill with us, go to Game Hole Con. Because <laughs> that's, that's going to be, uh, we're going to have a table there with MCG. We're going to do some wonderful things. But last but not least, I love you guys. And we love you guys. And we won't have an episode next week because Dean, I mean, I was coming to New York to chill with me. So uh, we'll probably figure some other way of doing things. But yeah, we, um, we're not having an episode next week. Yep, I am visiting New York for the first time in, what, almost four years after leaving. So, yeah, it sh uh, should be nice. But, unfortunately, I am going there on Wednesday. <laughs> so, yeah, no video. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, we will got, we will see you the following week. Um, maybe sometime before that if we can figure something out. But, yeah, uh, keep an eye out and uh, wish me safe travels because, you know, just traveling. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you again, guys, so much for stopping by. Thank you again, Arcus, for coming on Talking With Us. It was a blast. And uh, yeah, from us at CU, we will see you guys later. Bye, guys.